Okay, I'm Daniel with Aired Down, and today we're working on my 1999 to 2004 Super Duty Dana 60. As you can see, it's already been shaved. It's got this nice ballistic cover on it with the shave kit. And my next move is to straighten it. Now, I've heard from the internet that these axles are impossible to bend because the tubes are something like half inch thick. Which, I mean, yeah, I, I think I could feel half inch there. It feels more like three eighths to me, but it could be a half inch. Either way, a three eighths piece of dom or a half inch piece of dom still retarded. So the reason it is bent is this axle came out of a uh, Super Duty that was in a big front end collision. And what had happened is something had just smashed this wheel and basically broke this whole side off of the leaf springs. This side was still attached, so when I pulled this out of the junkyard, I figured it might need to be straightened. And I'll show you today how I see if a uh, axle is straight or not with just 3D printed stuff and string. And then uh, we're going to not put this in like a bottle jack vise like people normally do, because I don't have anything that even comes close to the strength of this. So we have to get creative. Now this isn't bent a lot, but it is bent. And it's bent this way because of that front end collision. I'm gonna try something different to get this axle to straighten out again. I'm going to try high heat and probably even use my TIG torch and just heat an area at the front right here and then I'm gonna quench it with ice and see if I can get the metal to shrink and bring the tube over. They say it bends here in the casting, but I'm not going to heat and bend this casting. By the end of this video, we'll know if that works or not. But the problem is, is I'll be welding... The problem is, is I'll be welding this Artec truss on before long. And the last thing I wanna do is weld a truss on and make this permanently bent when the, the amount that it is bent will actually keep it from functioning properly. Okay, what I have here in this 3D printed bundle of joy are two end caps that match with a post and then it has a little spot where, uh, where this string can come through it. And the reason why this is flat is because most 3D printers have like a start stop which will leave a bulge on a rounded edge like that. So I gave it a flat just so it could start stop in the flat. It naturally will do that on its own, the one that I use. I've got these indicators here with little steps that tell me how far out of round or out of straight the axle is. And mine actually still lives in this quarter inch right here, but it is barely touching the edge. So it's not quite an eighth inch out. I mean, like you say, it's not bent a lot, but let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. So these aren't my final revision, but if you're interested in these cheap jigs later on in the video, um, hit me up. I'm at aired underscore down on Instagram, or you can hit me up in the comments here. Pick one, get in contact with me, and then we will figure out how to get you some of these. So what I'm going to do is tie a small loop in the end of this close to the knot. Then it slips over this post, and that's what holds the line. And you can see the knot isn't quite at this hole here, and that's what you want. You don't want the knot to, you don't want this to be loose really. And now you can slip this in this little slit here, like that. You kind of saw it back and forth until it fits well. And then you just kind of loop it through here and you pull tight. And now it is woven through this device and it puts the rope nice and straight right through here. You got this, put it in this tube, give it the old pat. See if it get through. Nope. Alright, so there it is through one side, slip it out that side, now I can put this cap in and pull it tight. Now I'll slip the cord through the slit here, you can see it's the same piece as the other. We'll put it in, and now I'm just going to pull it real tight and wrap a bunch of loops around this 3D printed post. And now, we should be able to get it to play a little backwoods country music for us. Okay, you can see I cleaned this up a little bit. It's messy from all the cutting and grinding I've been doing in here. But we're just gonna slip this twine through this slit. Just 
just like that. You can see some electrical tape around here because one of the revisions I needed to make was I made this piece a little tiny bit small. So then we're going to take this center cap, throw it on, squish it all down in there so it's nice and tight, and then we can see uh, exactly how close we are, or not close. This is gonna be tough to see, just because of the nature of how it's in there. But I've got some pictures, but I've got this first hole, it's a quarter inch diameter. So if this, this string is touching the wall, I'm an eighth inch out in the radius, which means I need to heat this guy right here, get it cherry red if I can, ice quench it, and hopefully it'll draw this line back up into the center of that quarter inch. So I'm looking to draw this line this way a little bit. So let me go get some ice and water and we'll hit it with that map gas torch and hopefully that's enough. If not, we'll hit it with the TIG welder. If that's not enough, we'll turn the MIG welder up to full power and we'll just run a big bead like this from six to midnight, just boom, boom, boom. Well, as many as I can or have to, to draw the metal in and then I can just buzz them all flat later. But that's my plan. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Why does the spool hate the open carriers? Because he's afraid of spiders. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, if that made you laugh or you thought that was clever, give me a subscribe. Help a brother out. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Okay, we went out to the lake yesterday, so I've got this ice water in this cooler still, even if there's some like floaties from lunch in there, shouldn't matter. Got this map gas here. Yee. Sure, it's my second one in half an hour, who cares? And let's start the fun. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what that did, if anything. That didn't do jack squat, so now I've got the TIG torch out. We're gonna run some fillerless beads in arcs like this. We'll see, if that doesn't work, I think it's time to bust out the MIG torch, turn it up to level Maximus and let her eat. Okay, those are two really nasty 199 amp beads. So let's hit these with some water now, see what happens. Okay, let's have a little peek. Those didn't do anything. I've got a good feeling about these, so we're just gonna do them all down here. We're gonna do like 10 beads in a row down this way and see what happens. Actually, what I might do is come up and down and up and down and up and down and just work my way down this thing. Okay, 200 amps in the face. Didn't really do anything. Map gas torch to the face. Didn't really do anything. So let's set up the MIG gun, full level bajillion, and we'll just run some freaking nasty hot, um, let's just do some nasty drag up MIG beads and see if we can drag this tube together, but so far nothing's working. All right, I've got a Millermatic 185 MIG welder. This is set on level six out of six. 10 under on the wire speed, so it won't be dumping so much heat into new wire. So I basically have it maxed out on the heat creating potential in the workpiece. And I've seen this welder warp the crap out of stuff before. So I feel like as long as I just keep welding, just keep welding, this has no choice but to eventually squish together the material on this side and draw that, that line this way. So. Here we go, I'm, I'm on absolute maximus power. Let's do some damage. Well, if those three don't do something, I don't know, man. I 
as I was welding this, I was watching the wire just gouge the steel pipe out and replace it with filler. I almost thought at one point I was going to blow through the wall of this thing. It was just gouging so hard at this. This had to have done something. Yes, yes it did. It moved, it moved maybe 10 or 20 thou is all, but it moved. I think what I'm going to do, because that, that, that dragging up welding was cutting so deep into the tube, I'm letting this rotate that way, so I'm doing more welding like on top, and I'm less likely to just gouge into this tube. So what I think I'm gonna do is just keep welding beads on this. I think I'm gonna weld like out to here with beads. And I'm really only running a third of the full diameter of the tube. And maybe I'll increase that to like a full half. I don't know. Let's just keep welding and see what happens. Okay, we got our serious boy stance now. Guaranteed to get slag balls down my socks. So actually, I'm just gonna go back. I don't really want slag balls in my socks. Woo wee! Well, that sucks. <laughs> we got the towel like to stick inside on the metal. Whoops. Okay, it maybe only went another 10 or 20 thou. So I think I'm gonna step up my game and go ahead and add more filler. Because the more filler you have, maybe the more it'll contract. I let the welder take a little bit of a break and now we're going to hit it with uh, the proper wire speed. Except for we'll be running over these old towel bits. And I'm gonna clock the welds up. I've got them here, but I'm gonna start running them here. I'm gonna clock them up 10 or 20 degrees. I melted the string. Look at that. Chunky. When I pulled the trigger, it's shooting smoke out of the gun. I might have overheated the gun a little bit. All right, you can see just how many beads are here. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve big beads. And uh, now I'll show you, if you can see or make it out, I'll show you just how much it's changed on the inside. Okay, you can see I flipped this whole thing around. And uh, before, the way I could tell it wasn't touching that eighth inch piece, was you could push the, see how, see how you can see it moving? I mean, it's probably kind of hard to see for you, but you can see it moving when you touch it. When it was resting up against this cutout up here, this eighth inch cutout, you could touch it and it wouldn't move. But now I'm touching it and it's going in quite a ways, like 30 thou. So I'd say we're like a 16th of an inch away from straight now. Now, if I grind this all down, it'll be pretty damn hot too. And then I can quench over it after it's ground down. And then I can smooth all this out and we can pretend that I never even touched this axle. Okay, this is post grinding and post finishing. I used like a flat disc and then came over it with a little sanding pad with a die grinder. Nice and smooth, nothing to it. You'd never know anything happened. And then meanwhile in here, let's see if I can get you close enough to see, we are now solid in that quarter inch circle. We're a little off center. I've taken this and I've rotated it around with my fingers. That's what these holes are for. I'd say out of center, it's about, uh, I don't know, a 32nd of an inch, maybe even a little less. You can judge by the pictures, but it's probably better than it came from the factory at this point, or at least it's probably well within tolerance. So if you're wondering, this was here before, now it's here. So if you're wondering if that welding and uh, grinding and quenching actually worked, this totally worked. So if you are looking for a way to straighten your axle that's minorly bent, this is totally acceptable. So get with me at aired underscore down on Instagram or message me in the comments. I can make you a set of these plastic spacers. It'll be basically a few bucks plus shipping just to get them to you. So let me know. 
All right, I wasn't sure that this was going to actually work super well, but it seems like it worked just fine. The lessons I maybe learned is if you're gonna put your welder at level bajillion, just maybe do like three beads, stop, let it sit for about 10 minutes, then do three more beads. Um, it still works fine, everything works. It just maybe got a little smoky in the gun, which can't really be a good thing. And then with the grinders, when I was grinding this away, they got pretty hot. I was dual wielding, uh, not at the same time. That would be really, that would be really intense. This all stems from, I tried and tried and tried to get a hold of the axle guy in town here that does axles in Reno. I could not get a hold of him. And that's pretty common for the guy from what I understand. So I just figured why not attempt to tackle this on my own and sure enough, now this axle is totally straight and it's ready to rock and roll. And you could do the same with these 3D printed parts. Just get a hold of me. I don't think that this would work for an axle that's highly bent, like say half an inch or more. But for an axle that's bent a quarter inch to maybe three eighths of an inch, I would say this works perfect. So consider it next time you're doing an axle straightness or even just get these parts and keep them in your bin if you want to determine if your axle's straight. Boom, there you go. Um, axle straightness for cheap. So I hope you liked that. If you learned something, if you kind of got some really useful information out of this video, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, maybe even ring that notification bell down there so it tells you when I make stuff. Come back and watch and then uh, the next stuff I make this axle, this axle, they're going under my Durango. It's going to be one tons, 43s, I hope. Coilovers or ORIs on links, front and rear. It's going to be nasty, like an exo cage. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. So subscribe, like, ring the notification bell. Come back and see my stuff. Take it easy. I'm Daniel. This is Aired Down. Peace out. Go rock crawling. Bye-bye.